He then moves on to uh, what he calls idolatrous atheism. He says, as he's indicated here, idolatry and atheism are not as distinct from each other or opposed to each other as they might initially appear to be. Atheism, he tells us, needs idolatry. You cannot live consistently as a relativist without some constant absolute meaning and life. And so this is the second or third time he makes this point, right? You need something in order to live consistently, some absolute meaning in life. You just can't say, no, it's all, you know, um, movements in the void or whatever. Like, <laughs> no, you need something to do that. And so you can't live, he says, consistently without something like that. And so atheism needs idolatry. And he says relativists are always dogmatic about excluding non-relativist ideas. For example, when they say that people should not impose their values on others, right? Right. <laughs> also, though, idolatry needs atheism. Uh, the choice of worship of uh, you know of a false god is ultimately irrational and rebellious. And thus, most unbelievers, he says, combine these motifs in various ways. They need each other is the point that he's making, both idolatry and atheism. Right. How, how dare the, uh, the the Christian baker not bake a cake for gay weddings? You're, you're imposing your belief on us. Now get in the bakery and bake us a cake. <laughs> okay. I, I, I think someone's imposing and it, it's, it seems to, to, to yeah. be the other way around. Yes, yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> Who's imposing what? And, right. Yeah. Exactly. Who gets to impose, right? <laughs> Who imposes the imposers? That's right. 